just about sailing December 2020. There will be two videos in December about the windlass. This is part three, there will be a part four. Part three takes us up to the point where it got so cold I couldn't do any more epoxy work because the task was to really focus on getting the deck strengthened. So that meant figuring out where the windlass was going to go, drilling the holes, putting a plate on for the windlass to mount on, putting stuff underneath because it's literally just, apart from where the, um, the cleats used to be, there's no coring on the deck it's just fiberglass it's a bit flexible so that had to be changed and i say that it was a bit of a rush to get that sorted before it got too cold but anyway with all of that said um let's just get on and have a look at this right so it's time to drill some holes in the deck i want to do a, a sort of a test fitting before getting the heights and things sorted out so this is the template these are magnets so i can see where the holes are going to come out internally because very key the, the motor is going to come along here and there's plenty of room for it because it's going to sit about there under the deck this baton just happens to be exactly the same width as the distance between the center of the bow roller and this reference line and i'm not lining it up with the center of the spindle of the motor i'm lining it up with this line which is where the chain goes Right, so this is looking from underneath, by the way, in the chain locker, and that is underneath the magnet, which is where the chain will come in, and it's so strong that I can actually hire a, hang a tape mesh on it and see where the chain is going to come in, and I wanted it to come in more or less at the sort of deepest part, which it is, so that's, that's good. I'm going to drill a tiny hole through the centre of each one of these centre marks, as accurately as I possibly can. <laughs> so the moment of truth, or, or one, one of the moments of truth anyway. This is heavy, but it's not as heavy as that motor. Yes, we have a windlass. So there's yet another mock-up. I've just put the cleats in place. The windlass obviously can have to be raised up a little bit and the next thing I've got to do is I'll take the anchor off, get the chain in, I'll put some chain in there and get the angle right so I know how high that's got to be and um, yeah I think this is going to look fine. It, it certainly doesn't dominate the deck but it's not small and boy is that going to save me, well I couldn't do it without it to be honest, I couldn't do it at all. Right so the anchor is off, I have my willing assistant down below. Where is she? <laughs> no idea, it's skiving off somewhere. <laughs> I've taken the anchor off, put the chain on. Obviously that's too slack. I need to get that tight and then see what the angle is between here and there and it should be no more than five degrees in that direction. Now as it stands, because Lucy was hanging off the chain which she's going to just now, I kind of drew a line, drew a rough line and it was about four degrees which is about the maximum you can have but I need to put something underneath the anchor in order to sorry the anchor, the windlass, in order to get the deck flat. So what I'm going to do is guesstimate some fairly thin wood which I think is about six or seven millimetres and try it again and see if I can video it at the same time. Right Lucy do you want to go and do your stuff? Gloves please. Oh she wants gloves. <laughs> Health and safety got mad. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this there. This is this is parallel to the bottom, and I'm literally just going to draw along the top of the chain once it's tight. Say when. Uh, anytime you're ready. That'll do. Just keep holding it at that. Oops, I didn't do well. Okay, you can stop. 
So I won't bore you with this, but basically that's about two and a half degrees. So taking that up, I think that's about right. Um, two and a half degrees seems fine to me because that's kind of in the middle of zero and five, which is the maximum. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a plate out of the same thickness of the stuff that I've done, mock that up and then take a, a better measurement and see if that's okay. I don't know how critical it is, but to be quite honest at this stage, you might as well get it as accurate as you possibly can. What I've done is I've made two very rough, as you can see, templates, one out of five millimeter and one out of 10 millimeter ply, just to do those measurements again. Right, I don't have Lucy to help me today, so her job has been replaced by uh, a slab. So whatever you do, don't let her know that um, her, what she regards as a highly skilled, highly trained, qualified job, she's actually been replaced by that. Right, there is a bit of a catenary effect here, but I think it's all right. I'm gonna draw it. And that comes out to <laughs> one degree. So that's got to be fine. That's, I think that's fine. What I've decided to do is use this incredibly strong material. This is called G10, which is basically fiberglass, laminated fiberglass with epoxy. So this is, this is really solid stuff. Um, and I, I was wondering whether I should sort of offset it slightly, whether I should cut it exactly the size of the, the windlass or whatever but I thought what I'd do given that I've printed this out on a piece of paper that's exactly the same size as this um, but actually having a little bit of an overlap with the windlass is fine so I'm literally just going to take this on drill the holes drill this out smooth off the edges a bit because they're very square uh, with a router and then I'm going to epoxy it on the top of the deck and that should be, I mean, in its own right, that will make it very strong, but I'm also going to do the stuff underneath, so. Right, that didn't work out so well. I don't know if you can see, but the teeth on these, this, this cutter, have been worn away. That G10 stuff is so incredibly hard, so I've had to... I've had to get, get a new cutter. Buy the right tools, that's the answer. The rain seems to be the order of the day, so I've made this sort of front cover thing. I'm hoping the rain water will kind of drain in this direction. Right, so this is underneath the old the hole where the old horse pipe was, so pull out my super cheap expanding things. Hopefully this will pull off reasonably easily. So this was this was just a bit of board with some cellophane and then some peel ply and a little bit squeezed through there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's nice. This is all going to get yet another layer of fiberglass on it, so that'd be plenty strong enough. <laughs> right, I didn't film it, but this is the top. Quite quite a thick area in there, and basically what it got was fiberglass underneath, load of 406 epoxy, um, one of these, which is basically what I, I can't remember where I cut that from, wherever I cut that from, um, some G10, which was a lot more clean than this bit, and then several layers of fiberglass, then it'll need a little bit of filler. All of this top area is going to need to be redone, that's why I'm partly why I'm doing it on a sort of temporary basis at the moment. And I pulled the sticky stuff off here. This stuff is really gooey, so I'm going to really, really clean this up. Put tape round the same shape as the, the G10 mounting plate that's going on. Really, really clean it up, scuff it up, and um, so let's do all that off camera. As per always, I'm wetting this out, and that includes this and also the back of the plate. Probably don't need to in this instance, but old habits die hard. I've probably made this a little bit 
less peanut buttery than normal, partly because I want it to spread a bit more, um, and also because it's a horizontal surface. I wrap these bolts up with some stuff that doesn't stick to um, epoxy, just to get it roughly in the right position. I'm actually going to change my gloves and the battery at this point because the battery is flashing red again. There we are, fresh battery, fresh gloves. Let's just squeeze this down a bit. Actually, there's a bit of an edge. I'm going to go around once more with the um, with the stick to make that a bit smarter. This has been taking ages to clean out. I think you can see where it's sort of more brown that that's cleaned off, and you can see where some of the the old paint, etc., is still there. And obviously, the difficult bit. Is up above because <laughs> what I want to do previously what was there was this board which came out incredibly easy which was just stuck on very badly with some it's not even sycophlex it's still sort of bendy and then the old cleats which were in the center were on to the on, on this um, now that's where the windlass is going to be obviously so what I'm going to do is to put some plywood up there and some fiberglass now do I need to do that? Uh, probably not really, because to be quite honest, even with this and with the old cleats, uh, Serenity was once towed uh, in a 4.6, tied against current, uh, by one of those cleats and, and it all stood up absolutely fine, but it's certainly worth doing, isn't it? It's worth getting it as strong as you possibly can. Um, I haven't filled an awful lot of this, partly because um, there's a lot of dust around and I don't want this camera to get too dusty. I tried a bit with this tied onto my arm. And the problem is you've got to kind of use the angle grinder above your head. I didn't want Lucy to do it because with this, which is what I use, it's like one of those scotch bright things, um, you can't put the guard on and I wasn't very comfortable with her sort of using this above your head and she wasn't, she's not really used to an angle grinder like my, I am because they can sometimes run away with you. Um, and also using the flappy disc which I, which I love, that's much too ferocious. And the other thing is, and this is not an excuse, it's just the truth, I've only been able to do about 10 minutes at a time because my immune system, which and I think it's back in May 2019, 18, I can't remember what year is it anyway, um, I talked about the problems I've got with my sort of internal battery system and my immune system beating itself up, which means I can only do things for sort of half an hour or so at a time. Right at the beginning of lock time, lockdown, how ironic is this? One of my wisdom teeth at the back split in half vertically. <laughs> That's the, the big tooth right at the back. Got really, really inflamed, really angry, really unhappy. So my immune system was kind of thought, oh, we've got something else to do, and started to fight that as well. So my battery, <laughs> my battery life went down to about... 10 minutes, it's like having one of those laptops <laughs> with a bad battery, you switch it on and it can just about power itself up and power itself back down and then you need to recharge it again. Um, so I couldn't get a dentist appointment from, that was the end of March, couldn't get a dentist appointment until August 
And then he said, oh, that's, that looks a bit dodgy. That might split in half below the gum line as we're pulling it out. So you need one of these special new COVID safe appointments. So I had to wait until October to get that done. It's done now. It's such a relief. I don't think the dentist has ever seen anybody actually dance into the, the operating theatre thing. So happy to have his tooth pulled out. I would have had it out without anaesthetic. It's so nice that it's gone. So I'm hoping, cross fingers, that that means that I can get back to my... Uh, 20 minutes half an hour at a time so I can get this sorted out and then the rest of it done. For a lot of you if you're looking at installing the windlass, the actual windlass part I think is going to be really really simple. It's all this preparation work and I've already done, I've already put out the, the video about putting the, the floor in. There's, there's a lot more prep work to be done here but let's hope I can get this sorted. I don't know when this video is going out but anyway enough of me wobbling. I will try and get a bit of footage of just how uncomfortable and difficult it is because Serenity, I feel, always looks bigger on the video, and Serenity is not a big boat, and I am not a very flexible person. <laughs> so, on with the Tyvek suit, switch the angle grinder on, and get the rest of the stuff up here first. That's the difficult bit. And it's that pointy bit over there, that's quite a long way away. I have to crawl in quite a long way. <laughs> Sorry, this is just me moaning now, isn't it? Let's, um, let's, let's actually show you a bit of this happening. Did you just hear me coming so you started pretending to work? What? Did you just hear me coming so you pretended to start Pardon? to... <laughs> Quite hard to get in and out. Think about my age. <laughs> You're ancient. Fair enough. Right, let's have a look then. Lucy has lost her goggles. We're going to watch see if she can find them. This really is a good light, actually. So where did you last have your cockles? On my face, obviously. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God, if I had the camera running all the time. Right, I don't know if this is going to come out, but Lucy has finished all the edges on this stuff. Hold on. Um, good, whoops. good enough anyway. Or if you <laughs> good enough for government work. Um, I have cut out a cardboard template which I'm going to try and. Cardboard template. Can you see that? Which is going to go. Uh, which kind of goes up here and fits alongside everything. And then by the magic of editing, I'm going to turn this immediately into a wooden one. So what do we have here with these sticks? What can they possibly help you holding up? Well, for better or worse, these are the um, bits of wood that I'm putting in. And you can see I've done two side bits. There's a bit of a bevel on this one. And you can see, I think, a line there. That's where the front of the G10 is on the top. I'm actually going to cut that so that's into two, but it means I've got an absolutely flat surface here where the um, uh, where the actual winch is. This is slathered with thickened epoxy. Um, so let's just do this. Ha <laughs> ha. 
but that stuff is good. I'm tempting fate here, but <laughs> that is amazing. That's staying up on its own. <laughs> Right, so that's held up there. There's a bit of squeeze out at the sides. That's nicely tight against the um, bulkhead. Right, the very next day. seems to have cured delightfully the bits that are sticking through by the way I forgot to say I always say this but one of the reasons when I stuck that other piece up that it stuck on is I always wear everything else out with, with just normal epoxy mixed both the surface of this and the roof and then let it go to that tacky stage a little bit like when you put your finger on tape, and then put it on it just helps to get everything soak into the little, I mean this has had peel ply on it so obviously it's like sort of velcro to get everything sucked into it because this is the mechanical bond bit and then when you put the, uh, the rest of the epoxy on the joint between what's already on here and the other epoxy is the really strong chemical bond. So there we go. Right so today sees the end of the epoxy season for the year it really is getting too cold to do it I've managed to put these bits up at the back I put a fillet so yeah I put a bit of thickened epoxy epoxy thickened with 406 along there and put a a bit of fiberglass across there just to sort of tie all that together this has got fiberglass on it already I sort of double wrapped the plywood um, it leaves one piece to do which is going to go at the front which is this bit that I can do that later I've got plenty to do a sort of test fitting and the only other bit of tiny bit of epoxy I'm going to do is bevel this to 45 degrees which I'll do from above um, and then get the electric set up do a test fitting see if it all works Right, that's it until the next video. Um, too cold to do any more epoxy work. I forgot to say, by the way, on these pieces, this is the bit that's going in the front. On every single bit, what I've done is I've, I've given a soak coat of epoxy and then put a coat of fiberglass on the top um, and then peel ply on the top of that so there's a nice sort of textured surface and it's, and it's waterproof. Uh, the other thing I've done with the router is made a nice sort of curve around all the edges so that when they fit together and I put in the bead of thickened epoxy it kind of binds it together a little bit more obviously too cold for any more epoxy work so the next video which should be coming out soon hopefully in the next week or so will be all about the actual installation of the windlass itself and what I've done so far and I've already done that um, and I've already done a test um, sort of winding it manually so it's literally all I've got to do is fit the electricity and you'll see that shortly so good see you later in the month